Okay, welcome back. So last week I said I want to do a video. I want to do a video update every Friday if I can. Well, like you can see, uh, that didn't work. It's one day later, but I think that's all right. Um, what I want to do today, I uh, I want to do a vulnerable box because there's not much really new to talk about. Um, last week I tried a bit uh, I played around with Python a bit more and uh, yeah like I said I tried some vulnerable boxes and one of those boxes I want to show here um, <clears throat> before I start the disclaimer this box uh, or all those boxes I'm doing um, I'm showing my solution and only my solution there are probably a lot of other better and faster solutions out there and I'm a beginner myself so what I'm showing here is just how I solve the box and it's probably not 100% correct or like I said the only solution so take that with a grain of salt also if you want to do the vulnerable box yourself obviously you shouldn't watch the video and do the box first and only if you get stuck or if you want to see how one possible way to solve it yeah, watch this video. Okay, so uh, I started the box in VMware and also had a Kali Linux running. So the first thing you do is um, boot both VMs and then start the VM. Okay, so the first thing we want to see what IP address did the vulnerable box get? So first I'm doing a simple nmap scan on the whole network where I'm in. And as we can see my box or the vulnerable box can be reached on 192.168.1.2 and HTTP and SSH is open so that's the first thing we want to check HTTP on port 80 so we open the browser put in the IP and we can see it looks like a photo block it's called my awesome photo block uh, doesn't have much on there except one picture, a few categories called test, rooks con, 2010, all pictures, and what looks like a admin menu or admin panel called admin. If you look on the top, we can see that the web server is using PHP, so that's some information to write down. Other than that, there doesn't seem anything else. One important thing we can see is that the one injection point could be the ID. As you can see here, cat.php question mark ID equals one. So the first thing we do is we uh, we try to generate an SQL error by putting in a apostrophe. And as you can see, we get a you have an error in your SQL syntax and so on. And it says corresponds to your MySQL server. So we know uh, the web server is running MySQL. So we try something different. For example, and one equals one. And we get the pictures again. So that means we already found our injection points, which would be ID equals one, and then our SQL syntax behind that. We try a bit more. For example, put in a comment. That works as well, no error. So now we can try a bit more advanced stuff. We do that by putting in the ID and then attach union right after that. So ID equals one. Union select. And then because we don't know how many columns we have, we just put in null, which uh, should generate an error, which we can see here. The use select statements have a different number of columns. So we just put in more null, comma, null, 
until we see no error anymore. So we have three no, comma no, and we have the pictures again. So th uh, that means we have four columns we have to fill. So the first thing we want to see is can we use uh, numbers or do we have to use strings? So we replace those no with one. So one comma one no no. That works. So we know we can use uh, numbers for the f for uh, as values. Now we want to see if we can use strings as well. So we put in apostrophe a apostrophe for all the columns. As you can see, that works as well. What we uh, need to know now is where our information, when we want to extract information, where we can see that on the page. So we replace one of those values with uh, something different than one. And now we can see the one we put in, we can see down there right, beyond, uh, right under the pictures. So we replace that with a two. Still can't see a two. So replace the next value. Now we can see a two. So we know that the second value um, could be our extraction point, like where we put in the uh, syntax to extract the information we need. Yes, yeah, we can see all the other uh, other values don't show up uh, immediately on the page. So they could be somewhere else, but it's easier just to put it in the second value. So now we want to replace the two with something meaningful and replace with something to, for example, the add, add version. To know which ver version we're running, which version of Linux we're running here. Or which user. using on the database. So we see that the user is the pen, pen test lab at localhost. So now we can try different stuff. For example, what's the name of the database? Photoblock. And from here on, we could technically uh, extract as nearly as much as we want. Um, but if you do it all by hand, all manual, that would take very long and your syntax or your URL would be very complex. So now what, what I want to use is SQL map because it's just it makes things much easier. We copy the, the URL, the first part of the URL without our attack syntax. We open the terminal, we open SQL map, and we put in SQL map minus U for the URL to attack. SQL map also needs, needs to know where to attack the or the injection point which would be would be minus p and then the id so we already know the technique we can supply uh, we can supply that too which would be union based We also know the, or we are pretty sure that the database being used is MySQL, so we can supply that too. The database itself is called PhotoBlock. And we want to know uh, the columns in this in that PhotoBlock. So now we deny all the other uh, tests there and just dump the rest of the PhotoBlock. So now we can see. The, the database photo block has four columns, cat ID, image title, and another table users, which uh, has three columns, ID, log, and password, and another table categories with ID and title. So the others don't really look interesting. I mean, normally you would uh, probably check them too, 
you know, real penetration test. But right now we're just interested in login and password, which sounds like what we want. So to dump those, we supply supply that as well. Yeah, it should be minus T. It's a table. Okay. So now SQL Map is doing all the hard work for us, all the tedious stuff. Okay, and SQL Map also found the password hashes and offers us to crack them on the fly because we are pretty certain that the password being used is kind of weak. We will do that and just crack it from there. You could also save it to a file and do it yourself later, but yeah, we do it on the fly now. And as we can see, the password is uh, P, capital P, 4, S, S, W, O, uh, sorry, not O, 0, R, D. So now we can log into the photo block. So we go back to our website, go to admin, put in admin, and then the password. And yeah, that works. So what we can see here, there's not much to do except we can delete pictures, which sounds not really interesting. We can manage pictures, what you know, what I just talked about, and we can upload new pictures, which sounds very interesting because that gives us maybe gives us the possibility to upload pictures that are not really pictures. So first we try to upload a PHP file because we know we know like I said in the beginning we know the web service using PHP and if there's no file restriction we could maybe upload a PHP file and from there run more advanced comments or open up a PHP shell. So if we create a text file called test.php and put in the code you see on the screen. We try to upload that. We give it some name. Yeah, let's call it A. Close for the file. and upload and it says no PHP so it looks like uh, a blacklist is running on the web server so what we can do is try to either hide our code somewhere else or we can w try with a different file ending sometimes the blacklists only work on against a few names for example PHP but all written uh, yeah, but all in small you can try with PHP 5, you can try with PHP 4, or everything written in capital. Now I'm trying with PHP 5, add that, and yeah, that works. So now if we look at the picture A, of course there's no picture. Now we need to know where the picture is on the file server. So we go back to the pictures. You can do that with inspect element. From uh, Firefox, then we see the path to the picture itself. So the pictures are under admin slash uploads, and under there all the pictures and also our script. So we go there directly. Go to the side admin slash uploads, and yeah, now we can see our pictures in there, the PHP five file. So we try to access the PHP 5, PHP 5 file. Mm, okay, and it wants us to download the file. So it's not running. So that probably means that the PHP 5 file ending does not work, so we have to try something different. Give it some name. Now we have to change the PHP 5 ending.
So we know PHP doesn't work, so we try everything in capital. So now we know we have a file test.php and we try to access that file. So we go to admin slash uploads again and we see our test.php is there. So we try to access it now with some easy cmd command for example who am i which should show you the user yep and it's working we see the user running on this www minus data so we know we have so that means we have a working php shell now so what we can do now is supply more advanced commands for example ps which should us which should show us all the running uh, processes but unfortunately as you can see here it's not really easy to read it's all garbage sort of and to combat that we can open different tab and then go back to your first tab and from there route all the commands you're running to a text file. For example, we know we have access to the to the web server uh, root folder, so we can just save it in a log file in the root folder. Of course, if you run the command, you don't get any output, but if you uh, open the log file, the text file, which you just created, then you see all the, uh, then you see the commands, you just ran like it was in the terminal. So now we see all the the log file we see all the running processes on the system now for example we can try to find uh, writable files and folders in the root folder so refresh and you see where you can write write to with your current user from he from here on you could technically try to um escalate your privileges or change to another rule uh change to another user and maybe become root and from there on you completely own the system i don't know if that was the point of this exercise i don't think it was so i didn't include that in the video for example a very uh important file is the password file under etc slash password so we can extract that as well we can also try for the shadow file, which we need to uncover the passwords. But as we can see, the log file is empty, so we know we probably don't have access to that file. Yep, no access. Okay, so from here on, um, there's not much else to do. I think that was it for this vulnerable VM. Uh, what I want to do is uh, do some more VMs and uh, upload the video. Uh, I don't know if I will do it the same way I just did that now, uh, or do it somehow different, or do it while I'm actually running the VM. I don't know yet. Uh, well, we'll see you in the next video.